Representing Europe, Colin Montgomery. I wonder what uh, Monty's feeling right now. With Chloe. He's got it. You turn pro, you try and do well, but Ryder Cup's a million miles away. A wonderful shot. It's something that you strive for when you're holding putts as an eight-year-old when I started playing, or when you're in a tournament and trying to hold a putt to qualify for the team. Colin McGowan has won the Ryder Cup for Europe. Amazing, and it was an amazing experience. The Cup is back in Europe. An emotional moment for Colin Montgomery. And so, the Ryder Cup moves across the Atlantic, hard by the ocean, to Kiowa Island, South Carolina. 1991 was my rookie Ryder Cup. We had won the Ryder Cup in 85. We'd won the Ryder Cup in 87. We tied in 89, so we retained it. America wanted it back badly, and we wanted to retain it. So here we are, we're going for four in a row. So it was game on. Yeah! Well, oh, that was a beautiful part. We lost by the narrowest of margins. Remember Bernard Langer's putt just missing on the 18th green and Langer's expression of pain and anguish that he couldn't get this done. Seve in tears with Langer, hugging each other, crying openly in front of the whole team. And this sportsmanship and this camaraderie between the players uh, was quite, in, quite incredible and so intense. And you go, whoa, hang on. Okay, I want, I want more of this. That was the goal. I wanted more of it. Nick Faldo has assured the fact that the USA can't win, can only hope for a tie, and a tie would retain the cup. Seve Ballesteros. As emotional as anyone in the European camp. Having won the Ryder Cup in 95, away from home, and then bringing it back to Spain, all because of one person, really, Seve Ballesteros, it was really game on. It's a great honor for me to welcome you all to the 32nd Ryder Cup matches. I would like now to introduce the European Ryder Cup team. From Scotland, Colin Montgomery. <laughs> The Sunday of that particular Ryder Cup in 1997, we were well ahead. I think we can give him that. Suddenly, just out of the blue, number 10, who was me, was the last man on the course. He's got it. He's got it. They're ahead for the first time. What a fall from Colin Montgomery. If I'd lost, We'd have still won the Ryder Cup, but it had been 14 all, which wasn't for Seve. We had to win. So I had to get half a point. And it started to pour down at this stage. It's pouring down the rain. Everybody's soaked. Everyone's had enough. He says, come on, Monty, just get half here and get in. We played chess for four hours, Scott Hoke and I. And I was two down early on, I remember. And I got him back, and we're all square playing the last time. Got him down. Goodbye. He's got a 14-foot putt in the pouring rain for a half. So I've done my job. And uh, Seve comes on the green. He gave him the putt. He conceded the putt to Scott. That's a lovely sporting gesture. It's typical in keeping with the game. He gives Scott Hope the half. And I'm, st <laughs> and I'm going there. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I've done all this for what? A half a point went up. Well, come on. You know, he's not going to hold this in the rain. He could have done. But that was Seve. He'd had enough. He'd done what he had to do, was get 14 and a half points. Enough was enough. And he came on, give me a big hug. I'll never forget it. We were both soaked to the skin. I was absolutely drenched. I'll never forget. He said, thanks and go and get dry. Here he is, the man who actually won the match. Europe's number one. Oakland Hills Country Club, just north of Detroit, Michigan, the stage for the 2004 Ryder Cup matches. 2004, I wasn't playing my best, and I didn't qualify for the team for the first time. And the only way to, therefore, to get on the team was to get picked. 
I learned an awful lot from Bernard Langer, and it was great to have some respect from him that he knew what I could do. We'd played together many, many times. We'd played in 2002. So he knew what I could do. It was just a matter of trying to prove to him. So I wanted to prove to him. I wanted to pay him back for his pick. So this was a chance to win. For Langer, yes, but for Europe, for the whole scene, the whole European tour. This was my payback, really. This to win the Ryder Cup. Over this part, I was reciting my 37 times table, and it took away everything. It took away the feeling of people watching, where I was, uh, uh, my putting stroke, uh, my grip pressure, whether I was going back and forth, the line of the putt, nothing. 37 times table. And it worked, and it went in. Beautifully hauled, and Colin Montgomery wins by one hole. First guy I went to and gave a big hug to was Bernard. Absolutely fantastic that it should come down to Monty to actually win it for Bernhard Langer. And I said thanks. Uh, one for picking me, and two for his captaincy, which was brilliant. And just thanks for Europe winning this thing again. Which was superb. We beat them by the biggest margin ever in America. To this day, it still stands as the biggest win that we've had in America. And I was just glad I was part of it. We go into a committee meeting in Abu Dhabi in February 2009 to pick the next captain. There was a sort of vote and it was, yeah, it was fairly unanimous. That, uh, that I was to be the next captain. You think about that Ryder Cup every minute of every day. Yeah, amazing how you, you're captain of that team and it's your responsibility and you are suddenly in charge and have that responsibility of winning the Ryder Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2010 Ryder Cup and welcome to history in the making. End of September, beginning of October in Wales. It's going to rain, isn't it? You know, it's going to rain. You can't possibly have a week of good weather. It's not going to happen. It looks like we've got a suspension of play, and I think it's the right option. So one minute short of two hours play on the opening morning of the 2010 Ryder Cup from the Celtic Manor. Play has been officially suspended. I went straight into that team room, got the caddies together and got the players together. And I said, right, lads, I made a decision. We don't want to go through to Monday. I want all 12 of you to go out and prove to me what I believe. That you are the best 12 that there is and they're going to beat them as 12. And I said, yeah, yeah, OK, OK, Monty, yeah, great, Monty. And I'm going away thinking, Christ, I hope this works. <laughs> And it did. This is good. There'll be a huge roar. Oh, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant from Luke Donald. My God, they played great. Everyone to a man played great. We even birded the last hole. The Molinari's got their half point. Francesco and Eduardo, my God, they battled hard for that half point. And they birded the last. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful shot. I never lost a game, it was superb. One of the great days that I've been part of the Ryder Cup, whether a captain or not, nine and a half, six and a half, you know, fantastic. You know? And that was the making of it. Without that day, we wouldn't be talking about victory, that's for sure. The weather got in the way again on Sunday, so the singles was played on Monday, but I don't think most of Wales went to work that day. people turned up. It was incredible. Incredible. And my team thrived off that. <laughs> the day started very well. Francesca Molinari was up on Tiger Woods, won the first two holes. Just an exquisite. It all went horribly wrong 
We had a very, very bad two or three hours in the middle of that game that changed things in Americans' favour. Oh! The spin, it's in! Well, that's some way to win the hole. There's nothing Francesco Modenari can do about this. Tiger's on the rampage. And at one stage, it got to even. So there's my just-in-case scenario came out, you see. Greg went down. He's my man. He was on the course on his own. Match number 12, and we now had to win. America only needed 14 points. 14 and a half we needed to win it. So a half point for Graham McDowell wasn't good enough. That would have given us the tie. He had to win. He was one up at the time against Hunter Mahan, and I told his caddy he had to win. He hit this remarkable four iron into the 16th and hold the putt down the hill, which was one of the putts of the Ryder Cup history of all time. Keep on thinking it's going to go right, and it doesn't. It hangs on at the end and goes in. He's holding. Would you believe it? He's holding. Absolutely fantastic from Graham McDowell. Two up and two to go. Hunter Mahan, uh, his chip wasn't one of his better ones on 17. And his putt missed, and that was it. Is it getting there? It's getting there. It's getting there. Oh, my word, what a try. And the Ryder Cup is back in European hands here at Celtic Manor. So he did a remarkable job for me, for Europe, for the team, for everybody, to win there and to regain it back again. It's massive, you know, to win it back. I was very proud of my team. We're always underdogs, and we always seem to, you know, outdo ourselves. It's, it's tremendous, but I was very proud of the team and the way they came together. I'll never forget that Sunday. We expected a great match. We expected great support. The world was watching, and Wales delivered. I remember Celtic Manor every aspect of it as if it was yesterday, you know, of course you do, you know. I've uh, got great memories, and I'm just so glad that we came out with the right result.